Red Bull just replaced engineers, Verstappen reacts. The instability of the 2022 Red Bull car has presented reigning Formula One world champion Max Verstappen with an early obstacle to overcome if he hopes to win back-to-back -back championships. Verstappen failed to finish for the second time in three races. On the 39th lap of the Australian Grand Prix, he came to a standstill due to a suspected engine and overheating troubles. Stop the car, please stop the car, his racing engineer said over the radio as he exited the complex of turns 1 and 2. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we'll be talking about Red Bull replacing engineers. And before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Done? Let's get started. Verstappen finished the third weekend of the year with 25 points owing to his victory in Saudi Arabia when combined with his DNF in Bahrain. However, this places him far behind Charles Leclerc, who dominated the Australian Grand Prix for the majority of the race, going up to 71 points. 25 points for first place, plus one point for the fastest lap. That means Leclerc has a 46-point lead over Verstappen, who has appeared to be the faster of the two when they've had the opportunity to battle closely. In the 2021 title battle, maximum points margin between Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton was 32 points after the Dutchman's back-to-back -back victories in Austria. It's without a doubt a source of concern. I mean, we've already dropped a lot of points in the first three races, which may make a big difference in the championship. Perez stated after the race, We're definitely aware of it, and everyone on the team in Milton Keynes is working non-stop to find solutions. Today, we don't know what the problem is with Max. So, we'll see, and I'm confident we'll turn things around, and hopefully we'll be able to start over when we return to Europe. Lewis Hamilton had a terrible afternoon in Melbourne, finishing 4th and 43 points behind leader Charles Leclerc. The 7-time Formula 1 champion vowed to rally his Mercedes team to save his title hopes, which were already diminishing. He stated, I'll be on Zoom conversations with our supervisors, really trying to pump them up. We have some adjustments that need to be made, and we need everyone's help to accomplish it. It's about making sure we don't leave any stone unturned, that the hunger is real, and that we're making the most of every opportunity. I'll be chasing down the aerodynamic guys in the wind tunnel and scrutinizing every detail. In an interview with Sky Sports, he stated that thoughts of the championship were distant from his mind. Despite winning the season's second round in Jeddah, Red Bull's focus is on addressing dependability concerns. We're already behind schedule, so I'm not even thinking about the championship battle right now, he explained. I believe that finishing races is more important. Today was just an awful day in general, not having much of a pace and simply controlling my tires to bring it to a close. Because it appeared to be a rather simple P2 to begin with, I knew I couldn't fight Charles, so putting pressure on him was pointless. However, the fact that we didn't even finish the race is extremely irritating and unacceptable. When Red Bull mechanics were spotted working hard on Verstappen's car on the grid, he expressed concern that he wouldn't make it to the end. He stated, I realized there was a problem. As a result, finishing the race was always a question mark. These kind of things cannot happen if you want to fight for the crown. Red Bull team head Christian Horner acknowledged Verstappen's dissatisfaction with the scenario. However, he stated that the first priority was to consult with the engineers and figure out exactly what had gone wrong. He explained that his irritation was completely natural. That was a really sad outcome not to finish the race. We don't know what the problem is yet, but I don't believe it's related to the engine. I believe it's a fuel issue, but we need to get the car back so we can figure out exactly what went wrong. While the team's championship chances have been harmed by reliability issues, Horner stated that the team thinks its car is fast. I'd rather fix a fast car than try to make a slow car trustworthy. We need to get on top of it, he explained. We're unable to accept DNFs, but we need to figure out what the problem is and how to solve it. Ted Kravitz is a Formula One pit lane reporter who works on Sky Sports F1. After the race, Kravitz revealed that Red Bull didn't expect to know what happened for several days. Possibly until he returned to their base in the United Kingdom, I've been trying to figure out what exactly happened. We know liquids that weren't supposed to be expelled were emitted. Max claimed that the car had a brief minute to itself before he was told to turn it off, Kravitz remarked. But they claim it's too early to rip the automobile apart and that we don't know which part of the car it let go until the car arrives at the Milton Keynes factory two days after the race. Helmut Marko, advisor to Red Bull and in charge of its Young Driver Academy, shed some light on what he believes were the issues ahead of the leak gasoline. However, we don't know when or how Marko informed Sky Sport Germany that a large amount of gasoline had leaked. 
That's why we told Max to stop right away, ideally somewhere with a fire extinguisher. Marco went on to say that the team isn't having trouble with the engine right now. The cost cap is limiting the areas of development on the automobile in some ways, leaving him and the team to juggle where to go next. As a result, he believes it'll take time for things to improve. From the perspective of Red Bull, we don't simply have these reliability issues that are mainly unknown to us. He stated, we don't know anything about that. Then there's the weight issue. We're much heavier than a Ferrari there. Even without the pricing disparity, this is a challenging balancing act. We're about to enter a period of difficulty. We were astounded by Ferrari's speed in Australia. After each safety car restart, Charles Leclerc was able to sprint free, putting distance between himself and the rest of the field and posting the fastest lap of the race to boot. In relation to Red Bull's deficit, they have to pay far less attention to the tires than we did, Marco explained. Ferrari was in a league of its own and were plainly lagging behind. Despite the fact that Sergio Perez had a fantastic race, despite all the improvements to the cars this season, many people will be surprised by the problems with the Red Bull car. Whereas some teams appear to be struggling for speed, Reliability has been Red Bull's undoing thus far, and changes are taking place among the engineers as they look for a solution. The recipe of Red Bull after the Australian Grand Prix, one of the team's heads of racing engineer, Guami Rocklin, will take on a new job with the team's young drivers. Rocklin began his current position at the beginning of 2015 after serving as Sebastian Vettel's race engineer for four straight Formula 1 driver titles from 2010 to 2013. He first joined the squad in 2006 as David Coulthard's race engineer after leaving champion car company Newman House Racing. The adjustment, according to the team principal Christian Horner, is part of the team's continuing restructuring to face the constraints posed by the cost cap in Formula 1. The engineering group is still growing, especially with the budget cap we need to seek for efficiencies, added Horner. Over the last 15 or 16 years, Rocky has done an outstanding job track side for us. He has race engineered his way to all of his Red Bull Racing triumphs and world championships, as well as led the engineering team to last year's success. He'll evolve into a new role working with our multitude of young drivers, where we'll try to use all of his knowledge from dealing with so many drivers to good use in order to continue to grow the Red Bull Junior drivers. He'll play a key part in that initiative, as well as how it's integrated into Red Bull Racing using scientific methods. So Australia Grand Prix will be Rocky's last race weekend here before he moves on to that role, so it'll be an exciting new challenge for him. John Perot Lambiassi, Max Verstappen's racing engineer, will take over as head of race engineering. Regardless of the change, he'll remain Verstappen's race engineer. According to Horner, the reorganization will see him take a step up to become the chief engineer trackside while still serving as Max's race engineer. As a result, it's evolution. That's fantastic to see among the squad. Both of these gentlemen are going to be fantastic in their future roles. At the moment, the Red Bull Junior team consists of 12 drivers competing at various levels of the junior ladder. Liam Lawson is in Formula 2, Ayomi Iwasa, Jahan Daravala, Yuri Vips, Dennis Hogger, Johnny Edgar, Isaac Haja, and Jack Crawford are the drivers in Formula 3. It also has 14-year-old Arvid Lindblad in karting and Neol Leon as the Formula Regional European Championship, Tani Mora, and Salta Ario in French F4. Did you find this video informative or helpful? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Also, don't forget to like and share and take care.